Hello everyone, welcome to Sharad Chandra IS Academy. Welcome to the session on current affairs. In today's session, we will be talking about remote voting. As we all know, in the current affairs part, when we were discussing, we will be first talking about the tree diagram of the things that will be covered under that particular topic. So, coming to this remote voting, it is one of the topics which is related to your electoral reforms. Okay. So, previously we must have already discussed some topics with respect to electoral reforms under that we have discussed freebies as well. So, now we will be seeing about remote voting. So, coming to this particular topic, we will be analyzing why this particular part is in use, data related to that particular part and the meaning of remote voting as such, constitutional provisions or constitution about uh, this particular remote voting, the constitution's view with respect to voting and the need and the positives of having remote voting and the challenges or concerns related to this particular part and Supreme Court's view and way forward. Coming to the first part, the topic called remote voting was there in news because the ECI, you know, it is, it is aiming to set up a committee to explore the possibilities of remote voting. They were trying to create a committee in order to analyze you know, uh, possibilities with respect to remote voting. From the past few years, if you see people, government is putting its efforts to propose voting for NRIs, you know, electoral postal ballot systems, okay. There are many such initiatives that have been taken by government and this particular, uh, you know, initiatives, you know, luckily they have in increased the voting, uh, voting percentage in the elections and all. So, that is what is the reason for the government to run towards towards this particular part called remote voting. So, we all know because the right to vote is a constitutional right, one man, one vote, one value, one value is nothing but your fundamental aspect of democracy, is not it? So, because right to vote is a constitutional, constitutional right, always you know government tries to increase the voting percentage in order to have a proper democratic setup. Coming to the data which is related to remote voting, okay, if you see 67 percent of uh, you know voting percentage was noted in 2019 Lok Sabha elections, okay. So, it means 300 million voters out of 900 million voters did not cast the vote, okay. So, it means what 67 percent of the people you know have voted, most of the people were you know are not using the right to vote, okay. So, it means if there is a systematic denial, then that is different. For example, if there is, you know, there is a, some other problem with respect to that. But here the problem is there is no freedom to access the word, okay. So, if they purposefully, if the person is not going and voting, that is a different story. But the problem here, you know, like one of the problem for not having, you know, good voting percentage is that there is no access to vote for few people, okay. Now, right to vote is, you know, uh, also includes right not to vote as well, is not it? Right to vote includes also it right not to vote as well. So, our constitution is giving us universal adult franchise, ok. We have so much of internal migration basically, ok. So, that is what is creating missing voters. So, due to lack of vote access, for example, you see migrant workers who are working in other places it is a difficult task for them to, you know, come back to their original place to cast their boat and all. So, here is where the government started thinking about a concept called remote voting. So, if you see people, we will be the most populous country within a year and we have to facilitate that migration with a proper political rights, is not it? Because we are having so much of, you know, the data says that there are many migrant workers. In the COVID time also we have seen how many migrant workers were there in, some, in, in different parts of the India, okay. So, here the problem is that physical, you know, uh, physical presence is required for voting, okay. So, that is what is a challenging aspect because in the name of you nobody else can vote, that is what is the thing that you actually have, right. So, it means remote voting is thus a concept which is suggested by election commission. Now, let us just know about what in particular remote voting means. Remote voting is a system or mechanism that allows voter to vote in a location other than the polling station. For example, if you are a migrant worker, you can use your voter card to vote in a different polling station other than the station which is assigned for you. So that 
a migrant worker who is working in other place will have access to vote are you getting it that's what is the concept of remote voting now the basic need for remote voting is that it will ensure inclusion it means for political justice okay it will ensure in inclusion through political justice wherever you are wherever you stay you need not to take efforts to come to polling station to select your leader you can vote for anywhere from anywhere so it means it will be ensuring inclusion by giving political justice it will be addressing the disenfranchisement of migrants as i have told you migrant workers are not having access to vote they have to come from la longer distances in order to vote and all so this particular remote voting will address that disenfranchisement coming to another uh, issue it will address the geographical barrier that's what is the reason here if your physical presence is required in the place where your name got registered okay you have to definitely go to that place in order to ca cast your vote isn't it so geographical barrier can be you know overcomed with the help of remote voting and coming to another thing it will address the poly, okay voting apathy in the urban areas as well okay so if the percentage of voting is increasing people just understand it will secure your democratic rights it will compel the democratic setup to be more responsive so if you are you know increasing the voting percentage this in turn will lead to securing democratic rise and this in turn will be leading to compelling that particular democratic setup to be more responsive so it means there is a definite need in order to address this particular issue called remote voting in order to you know implement this particular part called remote voting so in a question which is asked about remote voting we can use this particular quotes that is one person one vote one vote and value kind of one value kind of things which is a fundamental aspect of democracy now coming to the uh, supreme court case okay in kuldeep nayar versus pocl the people's union for civil liberty case in this case supreme court opinion that freedom to access vote is an inalienable part of freedom of speech and expression freedom of speech and expression which is article 191a okay so that's what is the opinion of supreme court and definitely we have to address a issue called this particular in accessibility of voting with respect to migrant workers okay so that's what is the supreme court's case coming to the concerns and challenges okay fine we have an issue called remote voting we have so many people who are migrant workers and the accessibility to vote is a one of the reasons for low voting percentage in the elections and all so we have we have all the things that we have in your hands and we also understood the need for remote voting now coming to implementing the particular you know issue or a particular aspect called remote voting there are certain challenges associated with it for example first thing is technological challenge which is nothing but connectivities there is a technological challenge to establish connectivities for example i am staying in say for example some maharashtra area i want to vote someone in some other state okay if we have an access called remote voting i can go to a polling station anywhere near me i can show my voter card accordingly i'll be getting the options you know to get that particular contestant who is you know who is contesting in our original place our native place and i can vote accordingly but for this to implement you need obviously a good technology you need a greater connectivity so that's what is the first challenge that we can face the reason behind facing this technological challenge is that evms are su such an instrument okay the electronic voting machines are such an instrument which are not connected to internet so that's what ensures the security of evm okay there was there will be no chance of hacking that particular instrument hacking that particular machine okay it cannot be a possible task because evms are not connected to internet so that was what is an a challenge because in order to have remote voting you need connectivity connectedness and all okay evms not being connected to internet is a challenge as well okay so parallelly you have to you know dilemmas here you cannot con connect it to internet because it will be more prone to hacking and all if you are not connecting it to internet there will be a problem with respect to you know implementation of remote voting another important thing is logistical challenges in order to you know bring this uh, machine or you know to logistical issues will be there in order to 
have uh, to in order to implement this remote voting another important issue with respect to remote voting is mapping and enrolling the migrants because migrants will be coming from different places their you know their voting right or their voter card will be confined to some other cities all these information data should be collected so that's what is another challenge and voter verification is a challenge okay designated polling center okay whom should vote where if you are a migrant where you should vote okay you should have a different you know manpower is required technology is required a specific plan is required all these things will become a challenge and coming to another uh, important steps okay which were taken but this is also a challenge listed as a remote voter whether you are a remote voter or not you have to be verified verifying that particular thing all these things okay but physically coming to a domicile center okay physically coming to the domicile center is a very required task but here this particular challenges will be will be faced okay that's what are the concerns with respect to implementation of remote voting now if you look at the steps taken by government in order to you know go towards this particular you know to increase the percentage of voting and all are first thing is linking aadhar card with electoral id okay doubling the remuneration for poll officials trekking to the remote areas okay uh, you know there was an example also there was the selection commissioner in some area near bihar where he trekked into a very remote area very agency kind of area in order to you know con uh, conduct that particular elections over there now okay and then electronically transmitted postal ballot that's also an step taken in order to increase the voting all these initiatives of course have improved the voting percentage so now remote voting is something which have to be addressed okay and coming to the constitution article or article 326 provides about adult franchise universal adult franchise what is universal adult franchise it is nothing but somebody who is you know crossing 18 years okay he can vote and uh, recently there were also some amendments with respect to the uh, registration of voter id okay previously you used to have a single date now you have three particular three different uh, times wherein you can register for voting right okay if you are completing 18 years okay so coming to election uh, you know amendments section 23 of rpa which talks about linking of aadhar card section 14 of rpa 1950 talks about okay moving the qualifying dates i told you right there are three particular dates wherein you can register okay previously it was not the case that was what is a good step taken by the government and then general neutral for service voting okay it means what previously if a person is you know working in a arm arm forces or not or something you will they used to access something called service voting it means his wife used to vote in instead of him now that particular term called wife is changed to spouse because there will if you are use gender specifically if you are telling it is wife and what about female workers and what about you know their voting their service vote will the husband be you know uh, will, will, will there be a possibility for a husband to vote in the name of wife the same that happens in wife voting for husband so that's the reason in order to address that particular challenge now the word called wife is you know change replaced with a word called spouse okay so in order to have a general neutra neutrality now the positive things the pros with respect to this particular thing is de duplication of electoral rolls more voter registration will be there gender equality will be there all this uh, can can happen if we could able to address the problems with respect to voting coming to the way forward with respect to remote voting the first thing is that you know there should be a wider consultation okay you have to check all the pros all the cons you have to work accordingly and then you can use some pilot projects so you can just test this particular remote voting in smaller uh, areas and in small small elections and all and then you can implement in a larger scale in nation wide elections and all that's what is nothing but you do, doing pilot projects and then having a dynamic ballot unit okay dynamic ballot unit means what so you will be having a postal ballot wherein if you are selecting the area it will be showing the contestant who are there in that dynamic postal ballot you know instead of having a static postal ballot and then use of blockchain technology wherein you can address the challenge called technological 
uh, you know hurdle the technological hurdle can be you know uh, can be overcome by using blockchain technology so this is what is a way forward that we can do so finally when it comes to a part called remote voting just remember it was there in news because ec you know trying to set up a committee for see, looking into the possibility of that coming to the data we have you know less percentage of voting which is 67% okay and the other people are not voting not just because of their negligence or so because of the because of the lack of access to vote that's what is a challenging aspect so that's the reason remote voting has came up and uh, we will be also uh, you know talking about uh, article 326 when we talk about remote voting issue and then we'll talk about the need and positives of remote voting because it will be addressing the disenfranchisement of migrant workers okay it will be improve it will be creating an inclusiveness okay political justice is you know can be given it will address the geographical barrier okay it will address voting apathy it will enhance voting percentage all these things in the needs we can talk finally we will be talking about concerns and supreme court view and way forward that's what is the topic with respect to remote voting thanks a lot for attending the session everyone we'll meet tomorrow with a new topic